Hi all, Rex King here. Today I thought it would be a good thing to go ahead and talk about the lost son, the prodigal son. A lot of people know the story that way. Anyway, it's, uh, it's Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 32, and this is a story or a parable that Jesus talked about. And it really, really, it's an analogy of the way things work. And uh, you'll see that as I get to go through it. Let me get right into it. The lost son, it, this is the story where a man had two sons. The first son left to create his own life, but he fails. Basically what happens is he, he asked the father for his part of the, of the inheritance of the property that he felt that belonged to him, that the father felt belonged to him, so that he gives it to him. The son leaves to go create a life. Now, uh, in the New World Translation, he went and made a, a debauched life. But basically, if you, if you hit the footnote, basically he, it was, a, it was a, uh, not a very productive life. But, you know, debauched is really an excessive use of uh, what the man was or, the, or, or uh, what was about to happen. But the point is, is uh, what's really the story talking about? It's really uh, the second son left to create a life but fails. In reality, this is an analogy of Adam and Eve, okay? Free will with no set rules, okay? And in their mind, with this free will, no, no set rules, they went off to create a life, and it was a failure of a life, and the reason why is because they, attached, they, had to, they wound up attaching themselves to a citizen, and what that means is they they got to they 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 had some unnecessary things in their life, which is thinking the devil is needed. In other words, Adam and Eve was trying to make sense of life. They were, they they went through some failures and so forth, trying to make sense of what was going on, what was going on, and they concluded a devil was out there causing them trouble. Okay, and that thought is propagated through mankind to this day to some extent. Okay. The first son continues the father's way, which is, uh, which is nature, basically. The physical rule of the world, the physical world around, the physical rule of life, loyal, success, spirit. And really what I'm saying is the actual rule is you reap what you sow. So, so the second son gets, gets caught up into this thinking there's a devil, but the actual rule, the first son sticks with it, which is you reap what you sow, okay? Which is nature, okay? So the second son returns to admit failure. So finally the, the son comes to understand that there's no such thing as a devil out there. The way things really work is you reap what you sow, okay? The son finally understands that. And how does he, how does he come to understand that? How does the uh, how does the uh, the scripture read there? He says um, he says when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred throughout that country, and he fell into need. He even went to attach himself to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to herd swine. In other words, he came to the conclusion that the only option he had in order to make sense of, of, of why his, he had failures was to go attach himself to, 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 uh, to some, some man in the field, some man that will put him to work in the field, which is the devil. <clears throat> and... Uh, It says, uh, he gets to the point where he longed to be filled with the carob pods that the swine were eating, but no one would give him anything. It says, uh, when, he, when he came to his senses, how many of my father's hired men have more than enough bread while I'm dying here from hunger? So now he's coming to his senses. He says, hey, look, uh, look, instead of me trying to go off and think, you know, something else is maybe the way things work, okay, why don't I just go back and see what uh, my father's doing, you know, 
yeah, it won't be the same as before, but at least now I'll understand, you know, that if I follow the rule or the, live the life that my, my, the way my father understands it and lives it, then I'll be successful, you know? Where I went wrong was thinking that I didn't have power over my life, you know? But when you reap what you sow and you stay in the father's house and you recognize the father loves you no matter what, and he's gonna, and he's gonna you know, use this rule to, uh, to see to it that you can succeed, you know? Because the man had two sons. A good way to describe this is basically this rule right here, you reap what you sow, is a double-edged sword. A positive one edge, negative the other edge. And what I mean by that is you reap what you sow. So this man right here, the first or the second son, decided to go off and he fails. Now, say he did go off with the idea of living a debauched life or, a, you know, and it, and it did wind up failing, okay? Well, that proves the rule. You reap what you sow. You know, it didn't work out. But, but was it because the devil caused it to, for him to, because he did some bad things, the devil came back and says, oh, this guy did some bad things. Let's, let's punish him now. He needs some punishment. You know, he needs, a, uh, he needs, to, be, he needs to die at Armageddon. <laughs> that's what he, no, that's just the opposite of what this is, is, is revealing to us. You reap what you sow is... You know, instead of destroying it, you, you, you teach it, hey, look, you know, you, if you want to actually succeed, you have to start doing the opposite, you know, of what you were doing. Or basically, you reap what you sow, it's relative. You know, sometimes it's time to, to dig the soil. Sometimes it's time to plant the seeds. And sometimes it's time to leave the soil alone because if you go dig it up right after you put the seeds in it, you're going to have a problem. And so plant the seed, water it, you know, uh, in other words, you reap what you sow. You know, there's a process involved. You know, you don't... And that process doesn't include a devil, is what, what this story is telling us. So the, so the, the, the second son went off and, and, and through trial and error, figured out there's no devil needed. All I have to do is just go back to the Father and live by you reap what you sow, and I don't need a devil because basically what I plant is what I get. If I plant positive, I get positive. If I plant negative, like I had been doing, the second son had been doing, he's going to get negative, okay? Now, um, so the second son returns and admits failure because now he understands the father's way is a good way. I need to live by this way. I don't need to, to, to be inserting a devil into it. The father understands that the, fa that the son now understands, okay? And he meets his son halfway, because he knew if his son had the humility to recognize his initial, you know, misconceptions, you know, some, some people have to learn by actually getting, you know, burned a little. You know, some people learn by not. But unfortunately, Adam and Eve had to get their fingers burnt, and it caused the human family all this trouble because not understanding God correctly. That this is really the principle the same principle that Moses talked about, the same principle that Jesus talked about, is the same principle I'm saying now, but now we actually need to understand how it apply, is applied on a, on, a, on a much deeper level, on a mental level, okay? As we plan our lives, you reap what you sow, just like you plan a, plan a garden, or you plan a, to draw, if you're an artist, you plan to draw a picture, you visualize what you want, Maybe we can go take a snapshot of a scene similar and then you sit it down, you think about it, and eventually you start putting the paint and creating the image you want. Well, we have control as humans to, to, to create the world that we want. And this is teaching us that, hey, look, this is how the process works, okay? Yeah, you have some negative, you have some wrong thinking and you overcome it, okay? And you overcome it when you begin to realize that you... You reap what you sow. You know, it's a maturing process. Mankind is going through a creative evolution. In other words, it's a conscious evolution. It's, a, it's, an, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's an evolution that's driven by the mind of God. You know, it's, 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 it's purposeful, which means that 
Just like a child evolving in the womb of a woman, it goes through many stages. I mean, at first, I think it looks like a, a lizard or something, a, you know, a chicken. Or, you know, it goes through stages of, of, of actually evolving in a physical form until it becomes, until it becomes the human form. And that's what mankind has been doing, going through psychologically through the years. And this right here is describing the process that mankind would have to go through individually and collectively. And if you are awakening, then you are going through this process as an individual. And if, you, if you're watching this video, then you're awakening and you probably have some connection with Jehovah's Witnesses in some way. And so by understanding this, you'll understand what to do going forward. Because all of these videos that's, the, that's been put on here, it, or their purpose is to help to understand this citizen, the governing body that keeps pushing this thought that we have to have uh, a devil in our lives in order to have a relationship with God. And it's just not true. Our relationship with God the Jehovah or whatever you want to call your God is you reap what you sow, period. Anywhere on earth you are, any language you speak, <laughs> any color you look, <laughs> any military attachment you belong to, this is what's going to happen in the long run. So be aware. And... Uh... <laughs> Now, the second son feels hurt, okay? He's got the Jonah complex. He's, he's all judgment. Man, he did all this preaching, and he says, look, if this if, if after I did all this preaching, if these people actually aren't destroyed, it wasn't worth it. <laughs> I mean, come on. That's the opposite view he should have took. He should have said, man, I did all this pre preaching. I hope it paid off, and these people finally come to their senses, and the world changes. Well, See, that's the thing. Jehovah's Witnesses right now, as of this day, the 29th, actually, I think it might be uh, October 1st or, or, or the September 20th, uh, 30th now. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses still believe that, Je that the city of, of Nineveh should have been destroyed, okay? Jonah preached. The governing body preached. They did the work. They said it's that they said that the city was going to be destroyed if they didn't change. And uh, from Jonah's viewpoint, they didn't change, so they should be destroyed. So he went out there to sit under, you know, sit out there in the sun until the, until the gourd plant grew. <laughs> uh, and uh, anyway, Jonah, you know, Jonah... Uh, And so the same thing, the governing body did all this preaching and they said that, that, that Jehovah, you know, God is going to destroy 99.5% of the world plus, you know, because the governing body said it. And uh, that judgment is the opposite that they should have said. They should have said, oh, hopefully we did enough to where mankind has grown spiritually and emotionally and mentally enough to where Jehovah can change his mind and not destroy the world. Well, that's what happened, okay? Take it from that viewpoint. You know, you did your job, okay? But don't, you know, accept that you did your job. Now, now, how is, how is, okay, let's stick with this Jonah thing. You know that gourd plant that grew and then died suddenly? Well, you're looking at that gourd plant right now, okay? In other words, that gourd plant is a little message from God saying, hey, look, you know, rethink what you're doing here because you're doing it backwards, you know? Yeah, you're on the line. Yeah, you have a relationship with God. You're on the line. You know Jehovah, but you know him backwards because Jehovah isn't a judgmental God. He's not a petty God. He lives by this rule, period. And that includes you. And so if you keep believing in a devil, what do you think is going to happen to you as an organization? Well, Babylon the Great, the false, you know, that, that harlot that's going to be destroyed, you know, because mankind's going to eventually realize that this is BS, and the only people that's going to still believe it is Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> and you know what? You're going to reap what you sow, because other people aren't going to like the fact that Jehovah's Witnesses are... are 
or wishing their demise, that they, every day they preach that 99.5% of the world die. And if you're not actively doing it, you actively believe it. So your life is based, you know, under that premise. You're looking forward to that. I mean, give me a, you know, come to your senses as to what, you know, what are you actually doing? You are a creator. You reap what you sow means you're a creator. So if every day you go out to your garden and plant, 99.5% of the people on the earth needs to die so I can be happy, so I can live in paradise. And every day you go out there and water that. And you and all the other 8 million or however many people believe in this, not just Jehovah's Witnesses, but anybody believes in that devil nonsense. Every day they're going out to their garden and they're planting that in their garden. They're herding swine. They're eating carob pods. You know, they're getting crumbs and they think they're getting something good. How can you possibly be, be reaping something good if that's what you're sowing in your garden? If that's what you're painting on your picture? Yeah, Jehovah's Witnesses, you go to the website, man, the music is so pretty and, the, and all the pictures are so wonderful. I mean, it's like being in the best funeral home in the world. Oh, yeah, it could have been like this. It'll be like this one day, you know, when they come back. They're dead now, but look at, look at how wonderful it's going to be. You know, look how wonderful. All negative, all negative, all negative. Man, that's, that's double thinking. That's, ne that's, that's negative, 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 negative. Everything they teach, even if it's a pretty picture, they painted it. We can't have it now. We can have it one day in the future. You better watch out for your life in the meantime. And I'm the only one that knows whether you're on the right track or not. You know, I mean, that's, the, that's what they're paddling. That's what the citizen, the governing body is paddling. <laughs> yeah. And what did, what, did, what did the wise... Now, now, let's take this on an individual level. Adam and Eve became the human family. Now, you're one of the human family. You're one of Adam and Eve's children. Okay, so you as an individual need to decide whether you think this is a good way to think or not. Do I, do, do I want to believe in a devil? Or do I want to believe you reap what you sow? Do I want to believe that I'm going to go plant watermelons and the devil's going to come along and say, no, I'm not going to give him watermelons. I'm going to plant, I'm going to plant, I'm going to, I'm going to convert those seeds into something else. I mean, come on, man. If you think that kind of stuff, you, you start, to, if you think it in your mind, it is so. I mean, that's the kind of nonsense thinking that people are projecting into this world right now, and that's what you call lies. If I think it is so, and then I start talking it like it is so, conspiracy theories, and well, this is, this is the first conspiracy theory right here, that there's a devil and that God set up in some way, shape, or form, or at least allowed to, to torment mankind because mankind needed a lesson for some reason. Baby mankind needed a lesson. Yeah, baby mankind needed some good parents, and they didn't have them yet because they didn't exist. Now good parents exist because now people understand that devil thinking isn't correct. You reap what you, you sow is correct. This is it. People call it the law of attraction. This is it, okay? I mean, there's a bunch of names for it, you know? Um, karma, okay? This is the correct way to view karma, you know, correctly. The way, I mean, if you, no matter what religion you happen to believe in, any sacred text that you happen to look at, I assure you that secret text teaches this, okay, period. There is no other. This in one shape, form, or another, over and over and over again, just like I have done on this website from different viewpoints to help people from different... Uh, I need to drink some water, excuse me. To help people to um, get this. But this is a maturing process. And that's what this is saying. So basically, you know, in a lifetime, a person may have to go through a many cycles of before they begin to realize, hey, look, you know, if I just live a good life and I just project good, 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 then good keeps coming back. They may never really make the direct connection. See, it used to be mankind was much more, you know, agrarian and people were much more connected with nature and they understood, you know, how to control this. Maybe not consciously, but, you know, be, 
<laughs> things were simpler, you know, it just, it just naturally occurred. But as things got more and more complex, and, and of course some people want to control others, they manipulate things to where they, they use double thinking on purpose to control people, and that's the issue on earth right now. You know, right now the boogeyman is, uh, this man has nuclear weapons, and if we don't give him what he wants, you know, the nuclear weapons is going to destroy mankind. Well, I assure you, you know, whatever happens, it's not going to be that, you know, whatever happens, even if this, even if this, this whole world would be contaminated and destroyed, which, you know, doesn't, that's not what the Bible says is going to happen. Uh, even if that would happen, then it would re-evolve, you know, with this under, in other words, the next Adam and Eve would, wouldn't start from the un, no, what would be destroyed would be the physical, but not the spiritual, you know. And it wouldn't be something that would be an accident. It would be because it would have been allowed to happen, because it needed to happen in order to progress for the for the bigger picture to be fulfilled. But in my estimation, all we need to do is get rid of the devil, and we're good to go. And and allowing allowing people to continue to let, let me let me let me back it up a little bit. If you reap what you sow, and the first son, and the second sons, I want to go out and I want to have a debauched life. I need to have me some prostitutes, and I need to have me this and that, and whatever it was he felt like he needed, he found it. <laughs> Why did he find it? Because he reaped, he, re he reaped what he sowed. He says, look, I want to go out there and I want to live this debauched life, and, and so... Uh, he reaped what he sowed. So basically, Adam and Eve, in their in their initial condition, for whatever the reason, decided I'm going to believe in a devil. Okay, this is my this is my conception of reality. There's God. God's got a son out there that's that that went bad, and that son has has interfered with us, and now we're hurt, and now we need to be fixed, and and that's the situation. Okay. And so you reap what you sow. So everything from that point on, Adam and Eve created this world in their mind. Everything from that plant on was planted in their garden, and it became and it and it became true. Okay, it came true. So the world that Adam and Eve began to envision that there's a, a rebel son out there that's trying to hurt us, okay, it came true, okay. You reap what you sow. How did it come true? What caused it to, to become to come true? If you reap what you sow, it came true when Adam and Eve began to believe it. Okay? And it continued to be, become true when their children believed it because they taught it to their children. And so their children reaped what they sowed too. And then their children were taught this thinking. And so and it, and it expanded throughout mankind. You know, so this leaven was put into mankind's thinking in the beginning, and this leaven spread throughout all mankind. Now what's happened is, is through growth, through time, okay, uh, what's happened is some of the sons understand the process have come to understand the process cre correctly and uh, another term for this is the way you know a person you know when you're following the way everything that you do is following this principle you reap what you sow which is you love your neighbor as you love yourself and it becomes every every it becomes something that a knowing an understanding of faith without doubt you know, your life is based on that. I mean, this is what Jesus was talking about, to live a life of faith, you know. If you have faith, then you can move a mountain, you know, and throw it into the sea. Well, what is the mountain? Get rid of the devil, I assure you. That's the mountain. And through faith, you know, again, through listening to all these videos that I've prepared, and with an objective mind, you know, what's the, what's the information Rex is trying to relate? You know, what's he trying to help us to see? Because we have to visualize it. We have to grow personally. We have to individually 
recognize, hey, look, this is foolish thinking. It can't be, oh yeah, Rex said that he don't, he doesn't believe there's a devil. Isn't that a, a naive thing that Rex is doing to say that, that he could make a difference by <laughs> again, you know how this, you know how this got infected into the world? Through Eve, through Adam. They they somehow let themselves be duped into this because of their naivety. So through those first two, well, how are we going to get rid of it? You know, from Rex to everybody else that begins to recognize this. The fact of the matter is, is this isn't something new. Rex isn't explaining this for the first time. What Rex is basically proving with these videos is that the Bible narrative is true, okay, if you understand it correctly. You know, it all leads to paradise, okay, and what is paradise? Paradise is everybody... Reap, a living in a world where you reap what you sow and everybody is planting flowers and fruit trees and love and goodness and kindness and, and uh, unity and merit and respect. And, and of course, those that deserve negative treatment are given negative treatment. You know, in these videos, I have tried to be balanced with my positive and negative, that double-edged sword that I have been given, a double-edged sword of creation. You reap what you sow. I've created myself into a person that can explain this information to hopefully anybody that can speak English that's interested in actually knowing the answers to the, the real questions that, that pester mankind. And to help people to have understanding that the Bible is true. The Bible is like, um, a lot of people are familiar with the um, mythology. You know, like the, there's the mythology of, of King Arthur and all those. And, and there's other mythologies. Uh, but the point is, is that the Bible is a mythology too. But it is, it is a primary mythology. It is a mythology that actually explains things on a, on a very core uh, basis. It's got, uh, you know, it's got historical proof of its, of its uh, validity. It uh, it's obviously understands this principle thoroughly. So, it, you know, it was definitely divine mind that prepared it. And so the question is, what does it really mean? And, and what is it really talking about? And whenever you put, whenever you recognize this devil thing for what it is, you begin to realize that everything falls into place in the Bible. The issue that Jehovah's Witnesses have in particular is they've been taught a, a, a pretty a pretty good mixture of truth and falsehood from the viewpoint of accurate and inaccurate information of the Bible, okay? Now, the accurate part that they have is the best part, okay? And that is be a good person. So Jehovah's Witnesses are way ahead of the game, okay? They already have the qualities. In other words, I've used the illustration, you can be on the right line, but facing the wrong direction. Well, Jehovah's Witnesses are on the right line in that in their heart and minds, they understand the real premise behind life, and that's that's really good because they're on the right line, okay? But they're facing the wrong direction. They're facing the direction that says, "Hey, look, there's a devil." I want to. In other words, they're facing the direction of the of the negative, the second son. Uh, uh, what I want to do is, I want to believe in the negative. I don't have control over my life. Everything's bad. There's a de you know somebody's out to get me. I you know that's that's it. That's that thinking versus facing the other way. You know the positive. You know I have control of my life because God is all powerful. I'm one of His children, and so therefore I am all powerful to over my life. I am all powerful. I am all knowing over my life because anything I want to know, He's going to provide me. You know, I can go find a book or start studying it, and it will, I will come to understand. Um, and, and, and I'm all present in that I have a complete awareness of what's important in my life. I'm conscious and, and, and in control. I mean, if you think about things just on those very simple terms, you begin to realize what really is important and what's not. 
And what's important is planning the life that we want for ourselves, for our children, so that they grow up doing this properly. And then we won't have all this chaos, this chaotic constructions on earth that we have to deal with. For instance, let me, let me help you to appreciate the seriousness of, of all of these videos and how serious it is that everybody really make the best decisions as quickly as they can, although, you know, at a pace that they can handle. We don't want anybody to, to, to do anything that's unnecessary, a panic, because it's all going to be good. The biggest thing is to start changing our thinking about other people, you know, judgment. We have to stop judging people. It's just, we just have to. It's just not necessary to think that God is not in control. He is. And if some people want to live different lifestyles, that's just where they're at in their maturing process, and it's okay. And it may be that, you know, it, it will never have to change for them if they don't want to, because that's just where they are. But they're not judging you, so leave them alone. You know, that's what this is about. Um, we have to become conscious of the fact that God recognizes everybody as his children and we have to um, realize that if we want good things for other people we have to think good thoughts for them in other words if 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 we see someone that's living a lifestyle that we don't like we shouldn't condemn them in any way that would be facing the wrong direction what we have to do is we have to um, you know, look at it in a sympathetic way. You know, wow, you know, this person thinks that that's a healthy thing to do, you know. And if they come and ask you about it, hey, look, you know, uh, you know, I, they come tell you, oh, yeah, I'm doing this. I think this is good, you know. So, well, you know, if, if you think that there's some, you know, blessings in it for you, you know, I, I, you know, I hope the best. Hopefully you'll figure out, you know, whatever is the best in the long run for you. And I assure you that approach will help a person to... Uh, to, to recognize, hey, look, you know, uh, let me, let me, you know, I guess what I'm trying to say, we only have so much energy in our psyches, okay? We just only have so much. And if the energy has to be expended on I'm being judged by everybody and I feel bad, and the only thing that makes me feel better is to do this, and so I want to do this so I can feel better. That's where they stop. Whereas if everybody said, hey, look, man, if you think that's a good thing to do, then keep at it. But, uh, but you may want to reconsider and then leave it at that. And then, then they can decide. They know they're not being judged. They don't, you know, now they can start their, taking their mental energy and focus it on, on growth instead of you know, deflecting you know, what's causing them to have the problem. You, know, you see how you get stuck? That's this devil thinking. You know, you don't, we don't need that. Let's just all, let's, let's expect everybody to be the best they can be. And that's what this is saying. Anyway, um, the second son felt like this reap what you sow was not properly being applied, is what it was. This judgment complex. It felt like it was necessary in order for this to be true then all these people have to die. But it's just not true. You know, it's not necessary to, to, to destroy all the seeds in the world and then decide what seeds we want to bring back <laughs> to make a garden. No, you don't do that. You know, you, you, know, you do things to, to sanitize a garden if you don't want any unnecessary seeds there, but you don't kill all the seeds of every type. And that's what this was about. You know, it's... You reap what you sow was, was not feeling satisfied, you know, but that is, you know, that's, that's an unconscious way of thinking, you know. In other words, why does, why does the Jehovah's Witnesses feel like they have to face the wrong direction and believe in the devil? Well, first of all, because they believe in the devil, they feel like all of the bad things that the devil has to be atoned for, okay? Now, in order for everything to be atoned for, you have to have a Jesus, okay? So Jesus came to atone for mankind, and what did Jesus teach? Jesus said, the devil has no hold on me, I don't, you know, 
The Father and I are one. So basically, Jesus said, don't believe in the devil. Believe in the Father. The Father and I are one. So therefore, you're going to reap what you sow. Okay, that's what Jesus taught. That's what Jesus said. Okay, but mankind takes that as Jesus came to die for our sins, to get us back right with God, to prove that the citizen, what these citizens said wasn't true. And we've been... You see, you get trapped into this thinking that's really, really, really unnecessary. It's just not necessary because once you recognize there's no devil needed, then you begin to realize that all of these things have meaning, but the meaning is a little different than you thought it was. See, Jesus came to do something, but it wasn't to die for our sins. It was to create for us a template that we would be able to aspire to become. Um, in modern psychology, they know that there's what they call archetypes and things like that. And, uh, and in mythology, that's what, that's what mythology does, is help people to understand these archetypes so that they can understand how to be a healthier person. In other words, the archetype king is the leader of, of like a, a company. And how does a king properly act? Well, there's an archetype for that. But at the same time, there's also an archetype for a king that acts badly. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, is that you can, you can use all of these things in a positive, negative way. And Jesus is the same. You, know, you can believe in Jesus and love Jesus, but you can be facing the wrong direction thinking that Jesus is judgmental and hurtful and things like that, but it's just not true. You know, he actually preached, it's, you know, you reap what you sow, which is, a, and that includes you. <laughs> so if you reap what you sow and you're hating and wanting mankind to die, then you're reaping, going to reap what you sow, and it's, you don't want that to happen. And so anyway, um, should we feel hurt that that, you know, no, what we should do is recognize that our conscious, our conscious understanding is growing and maturing. We're turning 180 degrees because we're already the good people that we want to be, but we have to just now expand our thinking to be good like God. Recognize that everybody's good. It's all going to be okay. We're all, you know... So, so the, anyway, the end of this is, comes to this is, uh, which son grew the most, okay? In this process, which son grew the most? You see, the thing is, you see, that's what it's about. It's about mankind growing and maturing. And so really, this is just the, the growing, maturing process of mankind. You know, you can replace the devil with any false thinking or any creation. You know, Edison was trying to develop the light bulb. So he kept putting, you know, things in here, things in here, things in here, things, eliminating them, eliminating them, trying, 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 until finally he figured out the right combination to where he, re he, re he reaped what he sowed. He created a, a light bulb, okay? But the thing is, is he used this to create something, he didn't create something that would then take over the creating of everything else in your life. He didn't create a, he didn't put a layer. In other words, once he finished creating the light bulb and he went to the next thing, I think he created the photograph, phonograph too, you know. Then he started focusing on the phonograph. Well, there was no devil in the photograph, you know, the, or there was no light bulb in the photograph. He was just focusing on the photograph, 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 photograph. Now, at some point, maybe a light bulb might have been included somewhere in a photograph. But, it, but the thing is, it was just a part. It wasn't a feature. It was just a little part. It wasn't what controlled them. And that's what it is, is the devil is, has been controlling you reap what you sow because you think a devil is going to be there and it's needed. And, you know, you create it. You know, there's a saying that says, if you build it, they will come. Well, that's what we're saying. Is you, if you build a devil, I assure you, everything that it takes to make a devil, they will come. Now, why am I beating this drum so hard? Okay, this is why. It's because if people are praying for, if, if, if some substantial number of people are praying for something to occur, then everything that it will take for that thing to occur needs to come into existence. 
In other words, if you need to create a world that needs an Armageddon, you have to create an unstable world. So guess what comes into an existence? An unstable world, okay? So Jehovah's Witnesses are saying, we need, we need Armageddon because the world is so unstable. Well, guess what? Everywhere they look, they see, see instability, and it's true because they manifested it into existence. You're reaping what you sow. Negativity reaps negativity. And so because they do that, we have to have someone that's capable of actually creating an Armageddon on earth. Bam, we've got a country that won't act right or several countries that don't act right and have nuclear weapons possible of creating, with the possibility of creating a, an Armageddon on earth. Okay, so we're looking at reaping what you sow. Why? Because that's what they feel needs to happen. Okay, and so as long as mankind keeps thinking that this needs to happen, then the potential or the possibility of it happening needs to be available. So will we ever get away from this, this status quo of mankind right now at the, at the brink of nuclear disaster because of bad players? We will never get rid of it. Why? Because mankind keeps creating them because they have a devil in the foundation and they won't get rid of it. So individually, as people come to their senses, because the whole human family is this lost son, or at least was that lost son at one time, and uh, what's been happening is, uh, is mankind has slowly been able to come to their senses as individuals. And again, that's what the awakening process is. And... Uh, and we can appreciate that the Father, Jehovah, loves everyone, Jehovah's Witnesses, as well as every other organization or religion and, and everything. And, and yeah, a person may have to pay for past bad deeds, but it's going to be a just process. You reap what you sow. You know, that's, that's just the way it is. Just because the possibility could have happened didn't mean you had to make yourself, you know, put yourself in a situation that you can facilitate it. You know, you could have provided some kickback. And you see, that's what's happening right now is mankind is, is stuck in a trap. And the only way a kickback can be given is by someone like me to help someone to recognize, hey, look, you know, this is, if you're, if you're, anybody that'd be watching this to this point in the video would be someone that would be awakening and would be able to tolerate this, this talk and it would make sense to them. It wouldn't be nonsense to them. And that means you're awakening and you're very close to, uh, to where you need to be, which is, you know, understanding how to control your life in every aspect by controlling your thinking. Um, anyway, I didn't want to, I didn't want to get into too much. Um, I, I knew this one would be a long video to, to explain. Uh, I'm, at, I'm at 43 minutes, and so I'd like to go ahead and start winding it down. Um, let's see. Which son grew the most in this life process? Because that's what this is. This is a life process. Which son grew the most? Well, they actually both grew. Uh, the one that seemed to fail at first, you know, came to understand that these ways of thinking did, did not work. So, so the question is, is mankind a failure? Is mankind imperfect? Is mankind flawed? No. What mankind did is they got off track, growth process, and maybe it was it was needed. It was a foundation that was absolutely needed. You know, I think now in you know the, at the end of the book of Revelation, it talks about the devil would be tied up tight, and he would be thrown into a dungeon. Which means now this is a, this is a closet that mankind has in its psyche. You know what happens when you think negatively? Well, what happens is you get a world of black magic, of wizards that use negativity to control people by means of this governing body or other organizations, political organizations, you know, uh, financial organizations, you know, using power to manipulate and control through fear, you know, fear of losing your money, fear of whatever, you know, that's, you know, that's how the game's played. Um, and so the, the person that grew the most is the individual that comes to understand this process that's happening on earth, this, 
this lost son that needs to recover. You know, most people don't realize they're a lost son, and that's the first problem. You know, the, the, the organization of Jehovah's Witnesses won't even watch these videos, and so if you're watching this, you're you're defi and you're a witness still. You're defined enough to recognize that this is this is BS talk. You know, and that and that it's time for a person to to reevaluate you know, the way things really are connected in the world. Anyway. Uh, I know that these these videos that I put out, you know, they may not make sense to some people unless they've watched other of the videos, because collectively they 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 are a, a philosophy of understanding the way the world works, you know, from the God from the viewpoint of you reap what you sow. God is love, and Christ is the the one that came to to set the example of how to reap what you sow in your life. To help us to start understanding to get away from devil thinking because it would mankind was when jesus came mankind was entrapped in that thinking and so he had to talk on those terms too so people say oh yeah but jesus believed in the devil yeah everybody else believed in the devil too and if he didn't talk in the belief of a devil then how would he be able to relate to these people in any way but what did he say the devil has no hold on me you see he was helping them to appreciate or setting up everything that would be necessary for Rex King and others like me to come along one day and begin to understand the way this really works and what it means. And so, uh, hopefully, everyone takes this to heart and under, you know uh, begins to understand what this is talking about. As you watch other videos too, you begin to understand, you know, what it's about. It's about our raising our consciousness to the level where we no longer get ourselves entrapped into thinking that the rules don't apply to me. I can do what I want and I could let you know myself get distracted and doing things that I can plant anything in my garden I want and I'm going to get something good. No, it doesn't work that way. And people that are and as long as people think that they fail, you know, that's that's a failure. The only way you can recover from that is you have to come to your senses and say, hey, look, this isn't working, you know, just like the prodigal son. This isn't working. Let me go back and, you know, yeah, the father, I'm going to look like a failure. I won't be that that king that I thought I would be. You know, come back all triumphant that, you know, I knew the best. No, Jehovah's Witnesses with its governing body. No, yeah, they did the preaching work. They were successful, but they did it, you know, facing the wrong way the whole time. But they did it, and that was a good thing, and they're good people, but they don't, they need now to turn around, admit their failure, and come back to the Father. The, the Father's waiting to meet you halfway, and I assure you there is no one that's going to que question the fact that y'all have been the best y'all could be. You know, nobody. But, you know, anybody that would resist you know, that would continue to, to want to be out there with the carob pods, and, you know, it's not a good thing. Um, so which one grew the most? You know, those that, regardless of where you might have been in this process, whether you were a member of the governing body or, or somebody just studying or just watching this out of curiosity, or another religion that's trying to figure it out too, because this is this stuff applies in every application in life, uh, uh, you know, with regard to getting the devil or some other uh, figure like that exposed for what it is, and it may prove to be true, you know, but you have to you have to look, you have to expose it for what you know. Uh, anyway. Did the second son come to understand? Did the second come, son come to understand? You reap what you sow, not feeling satisfied, feeling hurt. The Jonah complex, judgment. That's yet to be seen. You know, what, what's going to happen with the organization of Jehovah's Witnesses as individuals is what we're talking about and how quickly. Uh, how much is this going to penetrate into the the XJW community because really I mean in reality I'm, I'm targeting this toward the governing body and Jehovah's Witnesses but the people that are going to watch this are those that are the in the XJW community and that's who I'm targeting all this stuff to 
Basically, I'm trying to say and let people know that those that believed in the religion of organ or, uh, or the uh, belief system of the Bible, including those of Jehovah's Witnesses, to the extent they understood the Bible correctly, you know, to love your neighbor as you love yourself, which, which means you reap what you sow, which means all is one. You know, if you're loving your neighbor and your neighbor is you too, then you're loving your neighbor as you love yourself. And you're going to reap what you sow, because what you planted, you're going to get. And if you treat another person badly, you're giving out to them what you, you know, are planning. So it's, can you see it's all connected? It's very, very intimate. And so, uh, you know, what, what Jehovah's Witnesses need to do is to understand that they're actually, as a group, and other groups like them, are causing the, the trouble on the earth that they complain about. And they're reaping what they're sowing. And this process explains that in detail. And the other videos that are in this series, that on this, uh, in this channel, uh, are all meant to help people to grow and understand, to, uh, to, 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 to see this process at work in their lives so that they can learn to be the best they can be. And every time they come back to the Father, they're stronger and better and, until you can... You know, you can say what Jesus said, I and the Father are one. And that's really what Jesus was about. Jesus was a template for us to follow, to learn about, and it's taken some time. It took organizations like the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society and other religious organizations and so forth and so on, all of history to, to, uh, to do their part in tutoring mankind in the growing and maturing process it was God's mind using all of these organizations the best he can in that moment in time, time to move mankind along, shepherding mankind along to the point where they can clearly understand consciously this process. And then from then on, as a collective whole, only manifest good things into life, you know, never manifest something negative like most people be hurt. But on the other hand, look forward to most people coming to their senses and realizing that there's no devil, that God is there and the process is you reap what you sow, which is love your neighbor as you love yourself, which means not being judgmental toward anyone, but recognizing that everyone is, in a, is, a, is a child of God in some place of development and we need to work together and be patient. And as long as we manifest or plant good things in our garden, you know, paint, paint good pictures in our minds, in, in our hearts, you know, believe and, and consider only good things, you know. I mean, this is what the, the best parts of the Bible talk about, you know. You know, uh, you know, what is the fruitage of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, uh, patience, or, or patience, kindness, goodness, faith, mildness, and self-control. You know, these are all the kind of qualities we're talking about. It doesn't say in there, oh yeah, watch out for the devil too. You know, no. You plant these qualities in your life, and, and all is good in every aspect or every trade, everything. You know, and if everybody does that together, we're all going to be planting good gardens in our little locality, and the world itself is going to be a paradise. Because everybody's home is going to be a paradise, everybody's community is going to be a paradise, everybody's you know, county and parish is going to be a paradise, everybody's state, everybody's country, everybody's everything, the whole world. Why? Because everybody is rowing in the same direction, you know? Everybody's planting the same crop in their field, love and, and justice, and you reap what you sow. You love your neighbor as you love yourself. I mean, it's so simple, it's pitiful. You don't have to kill 99 and a half plus percent of the people to figure this out. Just teach this. Don't teach something else. If you want to keep teaching and preaching, that's fine. Keep it up. You know, do the best you can, but teach it correctly. You know, waken as a waken as a as a group. And if you waken as a group, as an organization of Jehovah's Witnesses, you'll realize that you don't need to be a religion. What you need to be is you need to be teaching people how to reap what they sow in their life, and they're always going to be good. You know, that's it. You know, and that's what an awakened person would do. They would realize that all is one. Anyway, um, all is good. <laughs> the difference between God and good is one oh. <laughs> That's it. 
which is a zero. <laughs> um, and we control our growth, but God doesn't have any, un, uh, you know, un, uh, you know, dead children. You know, it's all going to turn out in the end. You know, exactly what the path mankind has to take is to be determined. And it could, you know, it, it could be some another, you know, another something. Uh, I mean, the conflict has already started on mankind. You know, let's hope that this organization, the organization of Jehovah's Witnesses, will begin to realize that they need to change their prayers and start praying for something better. And all these videos are all designed to help, you know, awaken a witness in particular, but anyone that, uh, you know, wants to understand how to overcome cult-like behaviors and, uh, and uh, high control group uh, mentalities that lead to uh, not overcoming, you know, things that should have been overcome. I think there's one more thing I need to mention. Uh, I mentioned about Benjamin Wilson in his original uh, manuscript of the God Diaglot. Well, one of the things that the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, through its governing body, through Brother Russell, did was they humiliated that man. And the reason why is because he did not believe in a devil. And he was trying to let the brothers know that they needed to stop believing a devil. And they, instead of accepting this, this Bible scholar's word, they humiliated him and stuck with the devil. That's what happened, basically. And uh, so Jehovah's Organization had a chance from the beginning with Brother Russell, with the obtaining of this manuscript to get on the right track. And instead, they did not do the research. They did not do the development necessary in order to become the spiritual organization it needed to be to understand how not to believe in the devil. Now, granted, its heart was in the right place. It's been trying to tell people that the world's going to be a wonderful place. But the only way it can become a wonderful place is you have to actually manifest it into existence. You have to create it because mankind was given creative ability over mankind. And so with this... With this being said, uh, if Jehovah's Witnesses now can get rid of this false teaching, the structure that they've created, uh, and, and replace this false teaching of a, a maniacal mind out there and replace it with just uh, a bad choice in life in that foundation that they have created, then they begin to realize things will start snapping into place and begin to realize that you reap what you sow, you know, that Jesus said was the divine principle everything led to is true is any teaching that doesn't lead to this you know in other words someone does something bad in the congregation so we reject them you you, you say you can't no you, you can't do that you know they're in your garden you know it, you know you have to you have to give them a chance to develop and become what they are now, you drew them and God put them in the garden of Jehovah's Witnesses. And now you're telling them the only way they can stay is they got to do it your way. Well, that's not what the Bible says. It just doesn't. You know? you know, everybody has free will and everybody needs to grow up and be what they are. Look, I'm approaching an hour and I think I've, I've, uh, I've covered this well and I've reviewed it a couple of times. And uh, Anyway, uh, I hope that everybody recognizes uh, the importance of, of what this is about. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn the ropes and trying to get things corrected. If I've hurt anybody's feelings along the way because I didn't do something right on YouTube towards someone else, please, uh, I apologize. I'm, I'm, I'm growing like everyone else. And uh, I want to encourage everyone to, uh, to, to, to uh, when they recognize this for what it is, you know, anybody in their sphere that they think that might could uh, benefit from any of this. If not this video in particular, maybe one of the others down the road, maybe you can uh, get them to watch one. I got one on manifesting, how to manifest a life, how to, you know, if you want to, a young person wants to be able to, you know, succeed at something, you know, what's the path to take, manifesting, how to manifest a physical result. That, that video helps a person to see how to do it, you know, how to think, which, and, uh, and, and, uh, and I have some of all sorts of other subjects. But the thing is, is Je as Jehovah's Witnesses, we need to realize that, you know, we weren't led astray from the viewpoint believing in, in the Bible, believing in a higher power, a higher mind was good, it's true. There is a higher mind. That higher mind is 
is going to make sure that all things work out and uh, that my my that my mind is basically the mind that made the, the Bible says God is love and love is you reap what you sow is you treat your neighbor as you treat love yourself and so this is this is how we connect with God directly if you're doing this without a doubt the best of your ability you're connected with God well look we're at we're at 60 minutes so I'm shutting this down Love to all mankind, peace and security. Please subscribe and encourage others to share. Let's get the word out that uh, look, God's kingdom is here. Is if we just learn what we need to do to come back to the Father and make this world the, the paradise it needs to be. Thank you.